Paradise of Maui. I'm Laurel Eastman, professional kiteboarder, and I'll be your guide through this Wind Wing Whippica instructional kite video. I'll teach you how to set up, fly, and derig your new kite. So follow along as we go through these easy step by step instructions. The first thing to do before flying your new kite is to look for a good place to fly it. You want to find a wide open field that's free of obstructions. Never fly your kite near trees, power lines, airports, and never fly your kite over people. To identify the wind direction, try to feel it on your face. Notice the wind in the trees or perhaps in a flag. You can pick up a small piece of grass or sand and throw it into the air, and that will help you to identify the wind direction. After you find the wind direction, next you want to identify the wind window the area in which you'll be flying your kite. If the wind direction is straight in front of you, the wind window is a semicircle from in front of you all the way out to the right hand side and all the way out to the left hand side. You want to make sure that that area is free from people or other obstructions. So now we're going to rig up your new kite. First we're going to rig up your bar. Take out the lines and the bar. Attached to the bar, you'll find the leader lines. These lines are a bit thicker than the flying lines and can be used to adjust the length of the line if necessary. Next, you'll want to attach the flying lines to the leader lines using a lark's head knot. This is the primary knot that you'll be using kiteboarding. Once the flying line is attached to the leader line, walk the flying line downwind, away from the bar. It's very important that there's no twists or tangles in your lines. You'll want to check your lines regularly for signs of wear and tear. Before you fly your kite, it's very important that you check the length of your lines and make sure that they are even. Have your buddy help you have one person hold the bar and the other person hold the end of the lines. It's very important that your lines are of equal length. If you establish that the lines are uneven, use a figure eight knot in the leader line to adjust the line length. Now that your bar and lines are ready to go, Let's get your kite out. Attached to your kite, you'll find a whole bunch of lines. Those are called the bridle lines. The end of the bridle line will be attached with a small piece of tape. Make sure that the bridle lines are all in front of the kite and free of twists or tangles. Before attaching the flying line to the bridle line, make sure that you've put some weight onto the trailing edge or bottom of your kite. Attach the flying line to the bridle line using the same lark's head knot. There are two ways to launch your kite. You can do an assisted launch where your friend helps you or you can do a self launch. First, we'll show you the assisted launch. Have your friend stand behind the kite, downwind from you. With your friend holding the kite, leading edge up. Gently pull back on both ends of the bar, and the kite should fly straight up above your head and into the neutral position. It's very easy to self-launch your new kite. Find some 
small weights like sand or rocks or coconuts and place them onto the trailing edge of the kite, making sure that the bridle lines are not tangled. With the weight on the trailing edge of the kite, go to the bar and gently walk backwards, pulling on both sides of the bar evenly, raising the kite to the neutral position. Start to play around a little bit by pulling right and left on either side of the bar. Try to feel where the power is located within the wind window. Bring your kite all the way out to the right hand side of the wind window and feel how there is less power out to the right. Slowly bring the kite back up to the neutral position. Then bring the kite all the way out to the left hand side of the wind window by gently pulling the left hand. Where we like to fly our kite for kiteboarding is out to the side, either out to the right or out to the left. In order to generate power, you have to move the kite up and down within the wind window. We call this the power stroke. Practice the up and down figure eight on both the right hand side and the left hand side of the wind window. You should be able to fly your kite without even looking at it. Once you've mastered the flying of your kite, you'll want to practice flying with a harness. Always launch your kite unhooked, bring it to the neutral position, and then practice hooking in and unhooking. Once you're hooked into the kite, it's very easy to control the kite with only one hand. Try simulating a water start on the land. Bring your kite to the neutral position and hold it there. Then dive the kite into the power zone, lifting you off of the ground and onto your feet. This is the same technique that you'll be using for kiteboarding and kite snowboarding. Cool, well once you're done flying your kite, you're gonna wanna pack up the lines onto your bar every time. Make sure you do it nice and tightly so that the lines don't fall off. You can either just do it straight around or you can make a figure eight. Okay. Once you've reached the kite, you want to take the bar and make sure all of the bridle lines are on top of the kite. Put the bar up against the wingtip and then simply roll the bar inside the kite with the bridle lines, nice and neat, ready for your next time flying. Make sure you store the kite in the bag so the lines don't become tangled. Well, that's about it. Soon it will be time to start thinking about getting your own wind wing or Whippica inflatable kite to get you out on the water, which is where I'm heading. Have fun and aloha.